the first C of survival. Coffee. What's up, Warriors? This is Kiyoshi Dave Herman with Five Elements Tactical Training, here to share with you some warrior skills and drills that anyone can learn and everyone should know. If you're new to the channel, welcome and thanks for stopping by. If you already follow us on social media and that's how you found your way over to this channel, go ahead and hit the subscribe button and the bell notification button and YouTube will let you know when the next video drops so you get all sorts of cool content from here as well. Welcome back, guys. This is our uh, two-part series on the 10 C's of survival as according to Dave Canterbury in the Pathfinder School. The first video is going to be the five C's of survivability. And they are the initial first five C's that you need for any sort of survival kit, bug out kit, get home kit, never coming home kit. There's all different ones out there. So I spent some time out at, uh, in Ohio at Dave Canterbury's Pathfinder School. And I took his basic class. I already signed up for a few more classes. And my goal is to like, you know, get my black belt in their system because it's just, it's, it's really, really Great stuff. Dave Canterbury's 10 C's. The thing I love most about it is just how to like take items that will serve multi-purpose. Like there's like multifunctional type of stuff. So instead of carrying three separate items, why don't you carry one thing that'll do three different things? Or how do you get some of your stuff to like really uh, cover a lot of different bases so you get by with way less stuff? And the answer is knowledge. So you have to have the knowledge, the skills, and then the practice of, of doing it so that you have the gear but you've practiced using the gear and you know how to put it into, when you need it, into action. Knowledge doesn't weigh anything. You could carry all the knowledge you want, which really helps you carry way less stuff. So Dave Canterbury has the 10 C's of survival. And uh, at his school, it was pretty interesting to hear how he even broke that down into two separate groups. He said, you have your five C's of survivability and then your five C's of sustainability. So you need like the basic stuff that you absolutely positively must have. And that's the stuff that'll help you survive. And then the other things will help you stay out there longer. So in this video, we're talking about the five C's of survivability. Let's get after it. So the first C of survivability is a cutting tool. So in my kit, I have a full tang knife, which means that the blade and the handle is all one piece and then it's got a good sturdy grip around it. High carbon steel blade. It's uh, got a Scandinavian grind. That just means the, the angle of the edge on there. The spine of the knife is at a 90 degree angle so that you get a good, uh, you, get, you scrape off a lot of material off your ferrous area rod, which we'll talk about in a minute. So one cutting tool is my knife, an ax, which, uh, I don't always carry if I'm going to be uh, like trying to work my bushcraft skills, learning how to like build stuff out of uh, wood and saplings that I cut down and off the landscape. My cutting tools, I don't carry both of them, but uh, a Baco Laplander um, handsaw, very cool, very light. Uh, you could use this to do the same thing to, to get your ferrocerium rod started. Uh, I want this Silky Gomboy is another handheld saw, um, a little bit bigger, a little bit lighter. Um, super strong, cuts through stuff super fast. I have a Swiss Army knife, which again, it's, I don't have one of the ones with like 50,000 um, blades in there, but it's got a, a pretty good strong blade. It's not one of the little, little uh, Swiss Army knives. It's kind of on the larger side, so it's a, got a good comfortable handle with a good strong blade. It's got tweezers and a toothpick, which you could use for uh, first aid, self aid, stuff like that. I also have a multi-tool, which is with me pretty much all the time. This is a uh, Leatherman Charge I've had for a lot, a lot of years. It was kind of pricey, but the thing's a, a beast. And it'll, uh, it's got a lot of blades. It's got a mini saw. Is this saw gonna cut as well as this? No, but it, it's still a saw and it, it would achieve a lot of those same goals. The second C is cover. So your initial cover layer is going to be the clothes that you're wearing. And hopefully you're wearing clothes that are, uh, you know, the right clothes for the temperature and climate that you're going to be in and, and the weather that you're expecting. So right now it's summertime and, you know, I don't always wear shorts, but I typically have shorts on. But if I know I'm going out in the woods or, uh, you know, going to be out hiking about, then I have pants on because I don't want ticks climbing all over me and, and whatever and get my legs all torn up. When I know that the, the weather is going to drop down, well, I always have some base layers either in my car or in my kit. Making sure that you have like stuff that if, uh, if it started raining, you keep yourself dry. If the temperature is going to drop, you keep yourself warm. And ideally something that's going to keep you both like protected from the wind and the rain or like the, the precipitation. So you're keeping yourself dry 
keeping yourself warm, controlling that core body temperature. Cover is also having, um, whether it's an emergency tarp, so something as simple as a uh, contractor garbage bag or a really heavy duty uh, drum liner, which you could use to create cover. You could lay this over a cardboard box and uh, you know tape it down using one of your other items in your kit or, or just you know get under there and get yourself in the box under this thing and now you got the structure, you got keeping yourself dry and uh, you wrap yourself in one of these blankets or some clothes that you have. This is an emergency blanket, so it's a tarp with a mylar side to it. I have a video on this. Uh, this is one that I trained with, practiced with, and beat the hell out of. I have another one that I keep in my truck now that I have another video on this. Is um, I've never used. I put this together so that it just sits there that in an emergency, I took it out, I tested it out, I, I, I uh, set it up to make sure that it was good to go, but then I put it away. It's not something I'm going to use for camping or hiking or, or any of that stuff. It's like for emergency only. They're all different types of tarps too, or all different types of cover. This is a $20 emergency blanket that I took some cordage and kind of already set up the the, uh, the loops on the side, the, the grommets, so that if I get it up quick, tie it down quick, and you have something to keep you, again, out of the elements, keep you dry, and you have something reflective. If you get a fire going to reflect some heat back on you, worst case, wrap yourself in it, keep you off the ground, keep you just, uh, keep your body temperature in and stable. I have this tarp, which I got from uh, Helicon Tex. I'm not going to take the whole thing out, but it's a eight by eight or nine by nine tarp. It's uh, it's great. It's waterproof. It doesn't have that reflective layer, but it's uh, especially for like warm weather. It, it's a uh, it's a home run. This is a bed roll. So in this is uh, actually this is two parts. It's fairly heavy. It's probably about ten pounds. Um, I was using this like during the winter time, or not the winter, but like the colder weather, like before uh, spring really broke, or like. It's, uh, it's kind of warm during the day and still freezing cold at night. And what this is, is a nine foot by nine foot oil skin canvas tarp rolled up with a queen size 100% wool blanket. So this is great for making all sorts of shelters. This is great for keeping you all sorts of warm. And to keep you off the ground, a great tool is taking that same garbage bag that's in all of my kits, all of my, my stuff in my car, every, every backpack I have has at least two of these uh, contractor grade garbage bags. So what you do is you just fill this with debris, like dried leaves and hay and you know uh, boughs and stuff like that so that you fill it up, it becomes like a big, big pillow. You tape it closed or fold it closed or whatever and then you lay on top of this. This keeps you warm and this keeps the, the ground from sucking the heat out of you because you have some space between you and the ground. So you're laying on frozen ground, snow, uh, whatever. This gives you some dead space to help kind of like uh, keep the ground from sucking all your body heat out of you. The next C is combustion. So combustion is as simple as a Bic lighter. And a uh, pretty cool thing about a Bic lighter is one, they always work. And even when the, the fuel runs out, you can still use that spark to get a fire going. If you have other materials that you should, you know, have part of your kit. We made a, uh, I have char cloth that I've made. It's a, uh, I'll have another video on that. That's a pretty easy one. This was, um, we found material uh, like this spongy dry punk wood and we like turned it into charred material by using our container. And believe it or not, this stuff, is just really, really burnt, like dried out, it turns into an almost like ash. But with just a spark of this, you'll get an ember on that, which you could put into a, a bird's nest or a tinder bundle and get a fire going. That's will be your initial thing. Now, even without the flame, just that spark is enough to get your char going. Without the flame, the back of your knife and a ferrocerium rod. Now, I have those little ones and my, my, my mini kit in the car. That, that works too, that'll get it going. But uh, six inch long by half inch thick, good, thick ferrocerium rod. That throws some sick sparks, man, that gets, <laughs> I'll set my damn blanket on fire. Idea being, it's another way to get your combustion. Another cool way that we did uh, at, at his course was, so I have a compass and on the compass is a little magnifying glass, which you use for map reading skills. Uh, you know, you like that really fine print, it helps you, you know, <laughs> I need reading glass as, as it is now, but we were using the sun, which is the, probably the most renewable resource we have, through this magnifying glass on this punk wood char, 
and all of a sudden you get the right angle you get the right corner of your your char material and you get an ember you're like oh my god blow on a little bit it starts glowing orange put that in something else and you got a fire so again the compass is one of the the tensies we'll get to in the part two of this but your combustion it's it serves more than one purpose having a mirror to like take care of like self-aid or have a tick on me or whatever like all this stuff had more than one has more than one uh, purpose. So as far as combustion, you have your big lighters, you have your ferrocerium rod, and you have your magnifying glass. The next C is a container. So this is a uh, single line, like not insulated, stainless steel container. Uh, you know, with a lid and a nesting cup. And the container serves so many purposes. Believe it or not, it's just not to hold your water or scotch or whatever, whatever your favorite uh, drink is, uh, or coffee. So this, because it, it's not insulated, we were able to find water, get a fire going, put this in the fire, and within a couple of minutes, get it to a rolling boil, boil the water for about a minute or so, and now you have disinfected water, which you could then drink, cook with, uh, you know, wash yourself or whatever. If you have another container, like this is something that I can't uh, put in the fire because it'll melt, but once that water cools down, I have another means of uh, transporting it. The container and your nesting cup, which is great because it's a lot of ways to use these two in combination. Uh, another thing that we did was we found punk wood, which is like the soft spongy wood of uh, like deteriorating or rotting tree. Fill the container with it. No cover. This acts as the cover. Slide this over the top. Put this over like really hot coals and leave it for, I forget, I don't know, half hour or so. And what it does is it gets the, the heat and the, the fuel source going, but there's no oxygen, so the, the, the punk wood never actually catches fire. It just turns into like really, really burnt coal or almost ash. And then that coal becomes your future fire. So taking an Altoids tin, which, or some guys were using this as their container for that as well, or they were leaving the, the punk wood once it cooled off, took it out of here, left it in there and sandwiched it between this. So they were still able to use this to collect more water, disinfect more water, store and transport more water. And in their cup, between their bottle and their cup, was their char material, which we use for making later fires. So aside from just being able to um, use this, I used this as my pillow when uh, laying on the ground and I was like, I couldn't find, get away to get comfortable. I felt like I needed a pillow, took this out, put that under my head and <clears throat> well, if I went to sleep. So the container part, again, being stainless steel, being single wall, not insulated, uh, you could use it to boil. To uh, If you put cold water in there, you could use this as a cold compress on a bump or a bruise or whatever. The more knowledge you have, the more uses you have for this. The more you get out there and get dirty and try practice, and the more stuff you come up with. The more you watch and read and learn and train, the more uses you have for it. And again, knowledge doesn't weigh anything. The more knowledge you have, the, the more uses you find for all of this stuff. And the fifth C of survivability is cordage. So on the table, I have uh, both number 36 bank line. It's, it's tarred cord, smells like tar. Uh, when I cut it and I want to like seize the ends, I take a lighter and I burn the end, smells like tar and it kind of like melts to itself and stuff. You use this for a million different things, but this is considered like disposable cord, right? So you have your paracord and I have these cut to set lengths already. So I have a, um, a quick deploy ridge line so that I could take um, a tarp and this, I have a video on that too, attach this to a tree, the side of my car, wh whatever, attach it to two points and then there's number 36 bank line attached to here to attach a tarp to the ridge line once you have the cord up and that's how you get a tent in various types of uh, configurations. So the types of cordage you have are your paracord which is retrievable and reusable. If you learn your knots and you learn how to like Tie a knot, it's easy to tie, it does its job, and it's easy to untie, and then you can recover and, and maintain, hold on to your cordage. Whereas this stuff, if you're starting to lash stuff together, like sticks to make a, a, a backpack or a frame for a, a bed or a, a shelter, this, you leave it out there. The question always comes up, well, how much cordage should I have? I don't know. I know that I always have a, a roll, which I think it's a, it goes by a pound roll of 36 bank line. And I have my paracord set in, in various lengths that I know that I could reach in and grab. So I have, I have two ridge lines. You really only need one. The longer one would do, but I just have two because I made two and I, I leave them in the bag together. But uh, 
One's about 30 feet and one's about 70 feet. And I know that I could cut one down if I needed it or I just have a longer ridge line for a longer span between two trees. I have a handful of these uh, about six foot utility cords that I use for a variety of things. I have a bowline on one side and a stop knot on the other. And man, this is in my pocket all the time. It's not just in my kit. There's a million uses for cordage. Again, when you know, uh, when you learn some skills on how to use it for uh, lifting, dragging, pulling, tying, securing, like there's a million uses for it. All right, so a quick review of the five C's of survivability. Your cutting tools, your cover, your combustion, your container, and your cordage. Getting by with just those five things is a, a ridiculous amount of things that you could do to take care of that, those five priorities of survival. Making sure that you have uh, you know, cover from the, the elements, making sure that you can get a fire going, that you can get water going, and that you can signal for help or get yourself out. Make sure you stick around for part two of this series of the 10 C's of survival. This being the five C's of survivability and the part two is gonna be the five C's of sustainability. Well, if you made it this far and you like what I'm teaching and preaching, go ahead and give me a thumbs up and like this video. If you're loving it, go ahead and hit that subscribe button. And if you got to have it, make sure you hit the bell notification and the part where it says all notifications to make sure that YouTube will let you know when the next video drops. If you're really digging it and you want more, you can find us on all social media platforms at 5 Elements Tactical. That's all I got for now, Warriors. So until our paths cross again, pray for the best, prepare for the rest. I'm Kiyoshi Dave Herman with 5 Elements Tactical Training. Thanks for watching.